All right, uh, whoever's watching this video, today is a special day. It's New Detector Day. Um, so in the box, I was actually just talking about this while I was detecting yesterday, but the detector came faster than I could put that other video up. So you'll probably, whoever's watching this is going to see two videos go up around the same time, uh, one with my Equinox and then this unboxing. So this uh, unboxing is... Uh, I got it from I think one of the only two people in the US that sells it uh, Richard at Backwoods Detectors and this is uh, the Deep Tech Vista X uh, beep dig so I used to have two beep dig um, detectors I had I'll talk why I start opening it I had a Tesoro Vicero and I had a Tesoro Mojave and I loved each of them and uh, there's a lot of debate about this on metal detecting forms it's kinda silly if you ask me because people worry about what other people swing way too much but a lot of that comes from Calabash diggers tutorials uh, but the reason I love oh I lost my train of thought uh, the reason I love beep dig detectors is because uh, they simply produce for me I don't know even compared to the detectors that I know absolutely the best, which is my Fisher F75. Hands down, my Fisher F75 is, is the detector I'm most comfortable with. I've been swinging it the longest. Um, let me check in here. There's supposed to be some extras. It's the detector I know the longest. It's the detector where those confusing signals on the VDI I can interpret, um, and I just know that thing inside and out, and I, I maybe because I've used it the longest, and I'm not that way with the Equinox yet, I had a little epiphany that you'll see in a video about the Equinox and the sound and how it's calling out deep targets, and I got some really good silver, but with the beep digs, even compared to my Fisher F75, I, I find consistently more unique and, and better finds, I mean, my, my Fisher, I've had some great um, like I had a four ring day and a, and a pendant on one day with my Fisher. It's my gold magnet, but like with my Tesoro, I found like the, with the, here's an example with the Mojave, the very first day out, I found a ladies honking 18 K this giant golly ring with like emeralds and all kind of stuff in it. And, uh, to find a picture and post that it was like the second dig of that day and um, it was actually I had my Fisher and I was cross-checking signals with survey flags and I wouldn't have dug it with the Fisher it was like so jumpy and the audio was weird or some like other stuff around it and I just wouldn't have dug it um, but I I dug it with the Tesoro that's how I did usually compare new detectors as I do the survey flag thing. I'll take the new one out and I'll survey flag and I'll go behind it and I'll see and that gives me a gauge of how they perform double checking signals. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't have dug it and it's great. I found like crazy weird jewelry. I found, you know, like this Tiffany's like kids charm bracelet that retailed for over a grand. And I just, I also like the mindless factor of them. I like the fact that you, let me put this away before I cut myself, that you just set it for a certain way. I just ring the scrim up and then I just um, dig away. I'm not one of the guys that likes to thumb the scrim and try to figure out what it is. I, I just dig, 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 dig. And I'm not always in the mood for a beef dig. Um, they do put more trash. Less so as you get to know the audio, like with the Tesoros, you start to it's like the Matrix, you know, when he's looking at the code and he says, oh, that's a blonde in a red dress. You start hearing the audio and you start seeing, hearing, seeing in the audio shape, size, consistency, and, and people think it's, it's like wizard voodoo. I don't know. It's just, that's how it was for me. And that's how, like, my, with my Fisher F75, that's how I feel about that. I just, I hear things in the audio uh, that I just have used it for so long so this is it I think let me give you my initial thoughts and impressions first of all everything was packaged nice I like that I got an extra rod with it because I got this small coil and I got the cover set and with everything this bulldog coil is interesting some people are saying that it's a little more sharp and snappy let me get rid of this 
so I don't confuse anyone. I was trying to make sure that I was angled up and on on point with the video because I got the GoPro in my head because I'm just lazy. I couldn't find my tripod uh, iPhone adapter to set it up. So fit and finish of the coil feels good. Uh, nothing stands out at me immediately. The shrink wrap didn't catch all the way on that, but I may take the heat gun to it and just give it a blast to try to wrap that around, or I just might take some, just so dirt don't get all stuck up in there, I may just take some uh, electrical tape and give that a wrap around, but that's not a big deal. Yeah, everything... Uh, the Tesoros, I never had any complaints with the Tesoros, but, um, okay, so it locks into all metal. So these guys are ambidextrous. They both do the same thing. All the way back is in all metal. You can use one or the other, but one will put it in. Um, yeah, so for me, it'll probably be... The only thing I wish is I think that if they could have done like Fisher and had just a single trigger in the middle instead of the replicating switches, but not a big deal. Um, that would just be, I, I love the Fisher trigger. Um, absolutely love it. Um, so here, oops, yikes. So we've got the battery compartment, the headphone thing in the back, which is just like the Fisher. I like it in the back, but I don't like it since I went wireless. Um, so, I don't know what I'm going to do with my Garrett wireless uh, set. It's got the little dongle that plugs in. I might design, so I got the 3D printers here, which brings me to another thing. I 3D print metal detector accessories, so if you're a subscriber and there's ever something you see like on Thingiverse.com or you need some MindLab coil ears, I'll do them for you for the price of shipping. The plastics are cheap, so it doesn't matter. But anyway, I think I could 3D print something. Like maybe I'll 3D print a bipod to keep this out of the dirt. And then I'll have a press fit adapter that will hold the the the, the Garrett wireless dongle in here. Um, or maybe something that I could, like a clamp or something to put in here. But that is... Uh, with the fisher, I can tuck it in, and there's enough space to to get it up under there. So uh, I'll figure something out. Maybe I'll go to the Facebook group and see what other people are doing. We got, I think, do they? This is a 5.7 inch. It's also a double D coil, but I think some people call it the Super Six. I'm not still too familiar with with Deep Tech, so I I don't know what they're they're calling that. Uh, 5.7 inch double D reminds me of the Fisher coil. This is the manual. This is pretty neat. Um, unlike my lab that makes you go to a website and stuff, which is fine. I mean, we're in the digital age, yada, yada, yada. But this guy has, uh, oh, did I just break it off the, oh no, it just pops out. It wouldn't matter anyway. It's on like a little, no, I guess it's just meant to pop out. Oh, or was it meant to, oh, I see. It was meant to flip up the other way. Duh. Let's get it back in there. Anyway, neither here nor there. It's meant to be like this. There you go. Pop! And it's got manuals and operating videos and everything. Um, well, that's cool. They gave batteries with it. I don't remember if my other detectors came with batteries, but uh, I like that. It's an arm strap. And I'm not sure if you guys can, are still in the thing. There's the battery. There's the coil bolt. Um, is that a spare? There's already coil bolt hardware on there. And then, uh, oh wait, here. Nope, it's not a spare. So that's the extra that I bought for the little mini coil. And then there's that. All right, cool. So um, the next uh, one here is just the the accessory. So they are Deep Tech branded. I wasn't sure if they would be or not, which is cool. I dig it. And then here's the camo. You got the box.
cover. Oh, the, I gotta take this thing off. Oh, I guess. Is this a shaft protector? Uh, and then here's the the box protector. <laughs> and then the cover. It's cool. So the plan is the next day that we have that's not uh that's not pouring down ring, I'll be out with this. This uh I just these are fun. And like I said, it, to me it's it's not absolutely all about the finds. I love finds. They're great. I have finds everywhere. Well, my daughter took over, so usually this is my metal detecting desk. Um, but my daughter took it over because she's working on a painting project. So here is... Okay, I still haven't sorted through stuff. I put them on plates when I come back from detecting. So I got that, and then I'm giving an informal tour. These are all wheats. This is all... This is just this year's. These are all silver coins. These are all pennies. This is from the hunt that I just got done with the Equinox, um, where I was. I pulled this guy down like eight or ten inches. This little tiny guy, another. They were these were really deep, but you'll see that video coming up if you watch. Um, and then after I clean the money, they all go into the pig because my wife was stealing my clad coins. So she won't be able to steal them in that pig. People got, I was joking about it, and people got like, uh, uh, like, oh, your wife's stealing your money. I, we've been married 20 years. It's okay. She steals my clad, but I'm going to stop her. <laughs> Here's a little half dime I found, um, actually, with the Equinox, the first one I had sold. Anyway, I'm, I'm on a rambling tangent, so stay tuned. Uh, for probably within a week I'll have the video up we'll, we'll using this for the first time and I'm going to take it to the same field that I've been pounding for a while and I just hit with the Equinox just to see if it pulls anything out. Alright, thanks for watching. Later.